Welcome back. The Washington Capitals are off to a strong start in their first round NHL playoff series against the Philadelphia Flyers. The boys in red topping the visiting Flyers two zip at Verizon in the postseason opener. Game two, where they hope to take a 2 nothing lead, is Saturday. Tom Throkeld of the DC Pro Sports Report joins us now. Tom, great to have you here. Great to be here. Got a lot for us to talk about. We've got the Wizards too, the NFL schedule too, but mm. starting with the Caps, and I uh, confess for myself, and I'll bet for a lot of other fans too, a sense of sigh of relief, mm. a sense of gratitude. Uh, all the you know, a team that does so well in the regular season, but we know the history in the playoffs. A long way to go to be sure, but to get off to a strong start, handle Philadelphia, get that lead. Uh, it's all they can do. You know, you take them a game at a time. Happy to be in this in this place now. Yeah, I mean, I think there were some valid concerns about how Washington would come out. They haven't played a game that mattered since March 28th when they locked up the President's Trophy and uh, home ice throughout the playoffs. Um, and they were a bit choppy to, to start with. I mean, there was there were three penalties in the opening period. Brooks Orpik took two of them. Uh, and uh, so what really worked for Washington in the first 20 minutes was their penal penalty kill, which was second best in the NHL, NHL all season. And, of course, Brayton Holtby, who tied the NHL record for most wins by a goalie in a season. Um, so the things that worked for them all year really came to their rescue in that first period. Washington has really had a problem falling behind in games. You can't count on coming back in games in the playoffs the way you can in the regular season. Games get tighter. Normally, officials will swallow their, re their whistles a little bit. Didn't happen in this game. And if, I think appropriately so. Oh, yeah. Look, if you like it rough, this was a rough, rough game. There was a lot of meat flying around in this one. And I thought, you know, the Capitals really held their own and then some. The Flyers have a, have a justified reputation for being a very physical team. Washington wasn't going to have it. They weren't going to be pushed around. I believe there were 27 hits in the first 20 minutes alone. That's a pretty furious pace. And then we saw Alex Ovechkin, Washington's best player, in the second period, absolutely pasted Sean Couturier into the boards. Couturier is, from media reports in Philadelphia, now out for the series. Wow. He had a sprained AC in the shoulder. And <clears throat> this is one of the things that is not often talked about. That was, about the, that was the hit where he went to the bench right away and then immediately... Right, that's right. He even he then w went straight to the locker room. That's right. This is something that's not often talked about, Ovechkin. Ovechkin is not like Crosby in the sense that Ovechkin is a physical player. He will mix it up. Some people think he takes cheap shots, but that was a perfectly legal shot there. A goal in the second and an insurance goal late in the third. That's right. Carlson got a goal in... Uh, John Carlson, defenseman, got a goal in the second period. Really, he, he fired... It was, a, it was a power play. And about 19 seconds into it, uh, off in, a, uh, in a, um, a delay of game penalty, he fired one through a lot of traffic. It bounced off a couple of people and got past Mason, the, the Flyers goalie. Uh, you know, a bit of a lucky goal, but still perfectly legitimate. And then the, the last goal, the, the real insurance goal, was a beauty. I mean, you saw uh, uh, Marcus Johansson just stripping uh, Shane Gostisbeer, the, the talented young player for Philadelphia, stripped him. And then he hit uh, Jay Beagle for a fantastic one-timer wrister right in the slot. A beautiful goal um, and, and a classic Capitals goal uh, this, this season. The, the tenor of the game seemed to change in the second and third periods. Yeah. Uh, the Flyers did, uh, got very few chances. Uh, the, the Capitals' intensity level was up. Their, uh, uh, the, their, uh, ch the, the, a lot of intensity in terms of right. chasing down the puck. Yeah. Uh, the, we've already talked about the hitting, but... Uh, I mean, for, for all the good that they needed Holtby to do, particularly when shorthanded in the, in the first period, I felt like it was the, the front five in, the, yeah. in periods two and three who took control and got Washington the win. Yeah, that's right. Holtby really had to come through in the first period, but in the second and third periods, you're right. He didn't have to work as hard. The Caps, I thought, really dominated the game in the second and third periods. They couldn't break through with a lot of goals. They were one for six on their own power play. Um, but they, they really beat the Flyers to the puck consistently. And um, they were terrific uh, in the blue lines. And I thought it was a very, very solid performance all around from Washington. It was really kind of the script that they followed all season long. This was a kind of classic Capitals win that we've seen this year. The Flyers are a good team. They played very well in the second half of the season. But they don't, they're not quite up to the talent level of Washington. And if Couturier is not going to play for the rest of, the se uh, rest of this series, that's a major loss for Philadelphia. They were a much, much better team with him around. When he was out uh, this season, they were not one of the better teams in the league. Uh, and, and one of the things that really impressed me was uh, the, uh, uh, Caps players were sort of cursing Brooks Orpik um, in that first period for those two penalties he took. But in that third period, 
he took a high stick to the face and it knocked out part of one of his teeth. And this is classic Brooks Orpik and a tough hockey player. He goes to the, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double, uh, double penalty. For, because, it's, for, because it hit Drew, literally Drew it, blood. It drew right? blood. And, that, and that's the criteria. That's right. Orpik goes, goes to the bench, sits down, he grabs a towel, and he puts it to his mouth to sop off some of the blood, and then pulls out the remaining chunk of tooth that was in his mouth, but did not miss any time. He, he was back on for his next shift and played. That is playoff hockey. And going back to our first thought, it was good to see, it was so good to get the win. Uh, I mean, they, a lot of road ahead of us just to get out of this first round series, of course. But yeah. um, the talk 24 hours ago was the Flyers come in hot. They had to work hard to make the playoffs. They've been playing meaningful games uh, in, over the last few weeks. The Capitals have not. Right. The hope is that they can sort of flip the switch mm -hmm. because it is the postseason. You don't always know until it happens that they can make that a reality. That's right. I mean, look, the Caps clearly were not playing as hard, and the results demonstrated that in the last few weeks of the season. That's probably natural. It's not ideal. But, you know, guys, people, human beings try harder when there's more at stake. That's just a part of our nature, unfortunately. And, um, but this is the playoffs. All these guys know from the coach on down that they're really expected to do something this year. I mean, the, the, the Ovechkin Capitals have never been beyond the second round of the playoffs, and Barry Trotz has never been beyond the second round of the playoffs. They had a terrible loss in the playoffs last year, that you know, going up 3-1 on the Rangers and the losing in seven. And much is expected of them this year, but there are doubters. There are people mm -hmm. who say these guys are chokers. They don't get it done when it counts in April and May, and this is an opportunity for them to prove all those people wrong. All the talent is there, but this is why they, they brought in people like Mike Richards and Justin Williams, people with guys with yeah. playoff experience, championship experience, who come through in the late spring. Let's talk for a minute about the Wizards. Uh, we talked uh, yesterday with Alex Parker about the firing of Randy Whitman. Mm. What do you think they're looking for in terms of profile, in terms of the skill set or demeanor? that a new coach will have, and are there names out there, even though it's still early in the process? Right. I think, first and foremost, they're looking for player development. They want someone who will help these guys get better and better, the ones who are still on the roster. There's going to be a huge roster turnover this season, by this offseason, by design. They wanted to do that because of this is, you know, the, cap, the salary cap is going way up, and everyone is after the prize free agents that will be available this offseason. Number one among them is Kevin Durant a native of the Washington DC area and one of the top three or four basketball players in the world. Now one of the player, one of the coaches who's out there who's a possibility I think is probably the best bet right now. I'm not a betting man but if I was I would say he has the best odds and that's Scott Brooks, Kevin Durant's former coach at uh, Oklahoma City. A lot of players played better under, he really developed young players when he was in um, uh, Oklahoma City. And I think that if the Wizards believe that Brooks gives them a better chance of nabbing Durant, they will hire him in a flash. However, that might, you know, Durant might not care about that. He, uh, 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 Brooks is not his, his coach right now. So there are other guys out there. You're hearing names like Mike D'Antoni, um, who did very well with Phoenix, but then flamed out with the Knicks and the Lakers. He runs kind of a high-octane offense. Washington would need to add some three-point shooters, I would think, to play the kind of offense that he wants to play. Um, and uh, there's a, a guy out there who's familiar to, to Wizards fans who I think is very interesting would be Sam Cassell. Cassell was, a, was an assistant coach in Washington for five years and is really credited by the players with doing a lot to help develop uh, John Wall and Bradley Beal. Cassell, of course, won two in, uh, NBA championships in the mid-90s with, with the Houston Rockets. He is an assistant out in Los Angeles right now, but I think most people believe not only will he be a head coach soon, but probably as soon as this summer. Hmm. So I think there's an opportunity to bring back a guy with Are there ties. a lot of teams looking right now? Yeah, there are other teams. The Kings will be out there. I think the Kings are going to go after Scott Brooks as well, uh, the Sacramento Kings. Um, so, there w I mean, th the Wizards will have competition. But there is some, there, you know, a team with as much salary cap space as Washington has, I think, will be attractive to coaches, particularly if coaches believe that Kevin Durant comes here. If Kevin Durant comes here, then you have Durant, you have John Wall, you have Marcin Gortat, you have Bradley Beal. That's an extremely attractive what's, roster. What's the uh, free agency window? When, when 
Do we look for things to potentially happen? Well, I think it'll start in July. You know, okay. start June and July, it'll start get going let's, uh, there. Let's spend our last minute talking about the NFL schedule, which sure. just came out. We only have 60 seconds. Really interesting to see, of course, the Browns with Robert Griffin III on the schedule. Steelers, uh, Steelers thought to be good. Uh, Carolina, such a tough game. Uh, very interesting schedule for the home team. That's right. Washington's schedule uh, at first doesn't look brutal. Um, it's, you know, the, it's about 17th ranked in the NFL, which is about mid middle of the pack. But it includes teams like Baltimore and Dallas, who really underachieved last year, largely because of injuries. I think in both cases, most people would agree. So those games could be much tougher than they, you know, than you mm -hmm. look at the, their, 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 their record last season. Washington needs to get off to a very good start because after Halloween, this, I mean, really from October 30th, where they play the Cincinnati boom, Bengals, who, boom, let's boom. remember, are a good team now. <laughs> yeah, the Bengals yeah, are a yeah. good team. They have played them in London. So get up early on Sunday, folks. Get your church out of the way, 9.30 a.m., or set your DVRs. Um, but after that, it gets really tough. That's right. They have teams like Green Bay. They play on Thanksgiving in, in uh, uh, Dallas? against Dallas. And, and Arizona? That's right. They've got, and they've got um, the Carolina Panthers, as you said, really tough games. Must get out to a, a strong start and hope to, you know, skate through and, and maybe get a bit of luck uh, there at the end of the season. Thanks, Tom. Great job. As always, My Tom Trollkeld of the D.C. Pro Sports Report. We'll take a break. Back with more.